In this video, I'll go through how to create product cart and labels super quickly with Google Sheets. If you run a product based company, an e com company like I do with Oh Crap, you're probably creating cart and labels all the time to so have stuff going from, you know, manufacturing to the warehouse, maybe up to customers. It's also really useful for managing stock and knowing what's in stock and what's what's been sent and having simple barcodes on there a bit of information about the product and it just makes inventory management an awful lot easier so at the start of things we only had a couple of products i used to use a word document and that kind of worked for a bit then we increased the number of products and so i'd moved on to adobe illustrator that was fine but no one else in the team could really edit it because i'm the you know graphics and marketing so I get to do that stuff so as we're now increasing the number of products we've got again and for every product run production run that we do we actually put um, batch IDs and product IDs on each one so we can identify them in the warehouse just so we know it's a good way that we can make sure the older stocks going out first and all that that sort of stuff so we're actually generating now a lot of cars and labels so I need a way or I needed a way that anyone in the team can create labels, add new labels, and as we go through the production process every month or so, just go and do that process for me without me having to jump into Illustrator and manually export things out one by one. I need a way that I could just do it in a couple of seconds and get going. So I figured out a way with Google Sheets. So that's what I'm gonna show you today. So diving in here, I pretty much made a just a very simple sheet with a couple of setup, um, a setup page, and then actual label data page that, and this is now our universal, where we keep all of our cars and info. For us, what this means is that when you create a PDF or a cast and label, it gets exported from the sheet as a PDF. And that's just all the product team need or the, the production and warehousing team needs is this label, they go and stick it on and print it on the carton and it's ready to go. So your carton labels may look different. You can edit it, that's fine. I'll show you how to see that done in a second. Um, but first, so let's go and delete the demos that I did earlier. So let's first talk about what needs to be in here. First off, you're going to want to copy this, this spreadsheet here, the carton label data spreadsheet. Now you can rename it whatever you like, but you need to copy it to your own Google Drive. So that's the first thing. After you've done that, you also want to create a PDFs folder or a, a final folder that the output will go to. So in my case, I just call it PDFs. You're also going to need the actual template itself that you're going to create the cast and labels from. So for me, the template in here basically has all the merge fields. I'll talk about them in a sec and all of the info that we need and want on our cartons. Now for this demo, for so you can see what's going on here, I've just created this out of a table, but I've left all the lines as just black. You probably want to in the live version, turn them to white so there's no um, sort of black lines around all, all your sections. But for purposes of the demo and so you can easily work out how it all works, and when you look through the blog in this video, I've left them as black lines. So with all this information open, you want to come to the Google Sheet itself. And the first thing is you need to enter just a couple of IDs so the script itself knows where to get the template from and then where to put the final results. So first off, we need to go and get the template ID. So for here, you can just pop over to the URL pull that one in. Fantastic. Obviously I did this earlier, but we'll just go and get the PDF or final folder. Fantastic. Okay. So a couple of other settings up on this setup page. You can define how how wide your barcode is. And I'll show you an example of how why that's or how that could be helpful in just a minute but you can define how big it is across the page essentially. And then 
the page size itself. You might have like this, there's a lot of white space at the bottom of this template here. Now in Google Docs, you can't define custom page sizes. You can't push them in and you know pull the white space out. So what happens with these this page size is effectively after, after it's merged and created the, the temporary template that actually the merge goes through, these page sizes basically chop in. So when the final PDF comes, there's not a whole load of white space everywhere around the outside. We also use, and this was the big push for me to actually chain, figure out a system to do this a lot quicker, we actually use a batch ID. So I've just put this on the setup page and this is referenced on the label data in a sec. Now you can you can change this. Um, you know, if you don't use this, don't don't worry. Uh, but all of these other settings help in the final creation of the template itself. Now things get merged across. Essentially, here you'll see that each of the titles up in this first row, so item skew, corresponds to a merge tag here between the curly double double curly braces. So you can create your own template. If you want to modify mine and do other stuff with it, that's fine. Just make sure that whatever your titles are up here and the information you want going on there, it's the same, exactly the same case, case sensitive, exactly the same on the template between the curly braces. Now, this, these first two columns is you have to leave these names the same unless you want to dive into the code and change it, but just for ease of use, there's the first A column. And essentially, if you put a Y next to that row, that row is gonna get created as a PDF. Now, the reason you don't just create them every, every single one every time, well, you could, um, but it might take a fair bit of time. And also for us, you know, we only do say, a production run that's got five items on but we've got 20 items i don't really want to just do labels for the fun of it so <clears throat> you can you can put a y next to any row that you need a label created for the next row across is the final pdf name that for me is just uh, basically the item SKU name followed by a hyphen and then the pack id the batch id and then cast and label on the end. It doesn't, you know, it's just a way for you to identify them when they get exported. So I just found that's a good thing for me. You can obviously use the, any data you want to stick in here, um, however you want to, and create your own names, or you might have a different idea on names, but that just, for me, is an easy way for the team to know, hey, you know, that's the cast and label for that. I don't have to go and double check it five times to see what's inside. Um, all of the other info on here is basically just best practice that we've learned over the years of things and descriptions and info that should be on the cartons. Obviously, one important thing is to have a barcode for warehousing. So anything that you want to merge an image onto this template, into this um, Google Docs template, is you want to have an underscore IMG with a capital I to case sensitive again. This basically tells the script, this is a link to an image, put the image in here. So if you take out the IMG, it won't know it's an image and might do something else with it. And it will just basically merge in the literal text. But if it sees underscore IMG, it's gonna put an image in there. Now, if you hit wanted your logo on here, you might you'd actually put it in the template itself. But obviously barcodes for each template are pretty dynamic and you can have different barcodes for each cast and label. So, the way that you bring in an image is it's basically a link to a Google Drive um, file, and that has to be PNG or JPEG. Obviously, you, you probably want it see-through because you're printing the cast and labels quite potentially on boxes, so you want them see-through. Uh, so you want to go for PNG for the transparency. Now, you just need to link the, the file you can have any extra stuff in the end. Really, the script is gonna take the full link and go and look for the ID. That's what it's really after, but just for ease of use, stick that, um, you have to stick the whole link in, 
and then the script will do the rest figuring out w what the thing is and as i said this row has underscore img on the end to know it's a image that needs to, to get merged in and <clears throat> quite simply when you have all the information in here after you put y next to everything you want you know created uh, just go to carton labels and go create labels and the script is going to run now the script does take about 20 seconds label maybe that's so if you're doing 20 labels it's going to you know it's going to take a couple of minutes um, but it will chug through there computers will do its thing and hopefully what you get out the other end when you go to your final folder is to in this case PDFs. okay so perfect this one turned out perfectly now where some of these measurements might come in handy is that you can see this second row that we did here the the barcode itself is that's it's basically pushing everything down a long way so this is where the making the barcode smaller or changing your template could be another solution but making your barcode smaller in this case is going to really help so what we can do here just to show you is let's bring this down to 350 so there we go the size has been pushed down now you can mess around with those to get it exactly right um, but I'm presuming you have a standard you know barcode size and um, barcode look so that's going to help you there but it just gives you a few options now if we stick this back to 600 um, and we actually made this size say 900 so making the actual PDF bigger and ran this again hopefully the page size essentially gets bigger so it's all on one page so let's see yeah so now you've got lots of white space but you can play around with the measurements and your template to to make it work for you um, yeah I found with the template I had originally in the barcodes that we certainly use that these settings work perfectly for us now a couple of things with images is you need at least view access to the image so it could be even in someone else's drive I did try that earlier where I had view access in an, into another drive and that worked just fine um, however for whatever reason um, Google Docs the scripts the whole process doesn't like um, images above 3,000 pixels wide so just something to bear in mind I, I don't know if you you want something that wide but um, the script certainly in my testing hasn't hasn't played nice with 3000 pixels wide on either width or height and one last thing with images you can only put PNG and JPEG in there as I said earlier I would love to put vector because I love having things perfect and like crystal clear and all the rest but one thing I did come up with was essentially exporting our barcodes at three times the size of our um, barcode width here and then just basically letting the PDF shrink it down but it's still got the extra pixel, pixels inside so um, that was my solution to have certainly the barcode looking crystal clear that obviously you want in a warehouse uh, because they're scanning that stuff super quick and uh, we need it scanned super easily so we're not having to scan it five times or put some light on it and all the other stuff so um, yeah my solution to having sort of high res images was basically export them at three times the size I was going to actually import them into the document with and that's it hopefully you find this script helpful and a lot make it a lot easier to sort of maintain and create new carton labels on the fly super easily so next production run Certainly for me, it was taking sort of 25, 30 minutes to go through all our files and edit it. Hopefully for you now, it's also going to take you 20 seconds, 30 seconds like it takes me now. Um, any comments with the script? Anything, any ideas you've got to make it better or 
different ways of doing things, let me know. Uh, always willing to jump in there and update it and help. So jump over to the blog, get the link below to the blog, jump over there, give me an idea of anything I could do to the script. Or if you've got any other business challenges, e-com challenges that this kind of thing might solve, I'd love to hear about it because I enjoy, just enjoy solving business problems because it, I just love it. So jump over to the blog, let me know any ideas. And outside of that, have an absolutely amazing day.